Welcome to Bragg Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, for the MEAC's Digital Broadcast Network on ESPN3. Today's along with Alfonso Barber. Hello, hello. And I'll tell you, the Rattlers come into this game the number one ranked team in the MEAC after defeating North Carolina ANT last week in North Carolina. Alfonso, what do the Rattlers have to do to maintain that standing? Well, Melvin, they have to pull their hello performance against NCAT through the bye week and into this week against Morgan State. That's just a little corn there for your <laughs> agriculture students in Tallahassee. But seriously, that performance was one of only two performances in which the Rattlers provided less than 10 penalties. So with that, they proved if they can slow their game down and get out of their own way, they can compete with anybody. Now, this Morgan State team lost to Howard up in Baltimore last week in a last hard-fought victory uh, against the Howard team. Now, they come in, and they have a lot of talent. And I tell you, Afonso, they could present a challenge to the Rattlers. They definitely could. As you mentioned, they did play NCAT earlier this season and came out with the win, uh, the one that the Rattlers came out with only a one-point advantage in. Uh, so they are a very talented team. If they just get out of their own way uh, last week in their loss against Howard, they had five turnovers, actually. So uh, if you negate those, uh, negate the fact that Cam Newton's little brother plays for Howard, possibly, um, it – they have a great chance to clean it up and have a great outing here today. Well, this is the 31st meeting between these two teams. And when we return, we'll be all set for the kickoff. You're watching me at football on ESPN3. Welcome to Bragg Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where the Florida a &M Rattlers are playing host to the Morgan State Bears. And I tell you, Afonso, the Rattlers come in number one in the conference. Number one, it wasn't supposed to be this way at the beginning. Nobody expected it. And uh, the week before last, knocking off NCAT was uh, possibly the biggest accomplishment of uh, head coach Willie Simmons in his time here. And uh, we're, we're getting ready to see if he can back it up again here at home. Said to kick off the ball for Morgan State is Nicholas O'Shea out of Detroit, Michigan. And it is going to go into the end zone for a touchback. The Rattlers will come out and start on their 20-yard line. We'll tell you one thing we don't have to worry about, Melvin, just so all the folks back home aren't fooled by the sun that they see on the field. Uh, temperatures are expected to be in the upper 60s with lows in the 40s. Ideal weather for football. Uh, it may be cold to you, but these guys normally are heating up out in the sun, and they don't have to worry about that today. That's definitely a difference from the last game here in Tallahassee where we were battling temperatures in the 90s. <laughs> so definitely a welcome change here in Tallahassee as the Rattlers get set to go up against the Morgan State Bears. Ryan Stanley as the quarterback. Stanley back to pass. He's looking and finds a man out complete. And for about a four-yard game. And that is what Rattler fans want to see. Don't start off conservative. Uh, start off uh, with a little bit of spunk, a little energy, a little confidence behind you, and uh, get this offense going early, keep them going the entire game. Florida and m second down, and about six yards to go. Ball is marked on the 29-yard line. Stanley's in the backfield by himself. Back to pass, and it's complete. 
at about the 28, make that the 32-yard line. As the Florida a is going to be looking at third and short. I like the first play, Melvin, but if the second play is a pass, at least make sure you get to that uh, that, that first down marker. Uh, now it puts them in a, a, a very manageable position, um, but the defense will either be prepared for this run or you could bust it open for a big play. Actually, I'm, I'm not opposed to the play call. <laughs> Third down, two yards to go. Florida A&M. Ball marked on the 33. And the swing pass is out. Complete to a rattler who is running for a first down. Is going to be brought down at midfield as it's complete to Chad Hunter. And you know Willie Simmons wants to see him going early and often. Had a few big games this season. And if he can show up today, he can definitely... Uh, aid Ryan Stanley in throwing over 300 yards again for the second time in three weeks. No doubt. Hunter with 32 catches for 446 yards and five touchdowns up to this point in the season. Florida a &M, first down, 10 yards to go. And the give is up the middle to, it looks like it may be Henryless, but he's brought down and met by a host of Morgan State Bears there at about the 48-yard line. And I believe that was 32, so that's Deshaun Smith. Smith yes. I don't blame you, though, uh, Mr. or Melvin, I'm sorry. There's so many backs uh, that they have to throw in there. There's there's Himmelis, there's Bowers, Bonnet, um, Deshaun Smith, who just got the ball, and any of these guys can take it to the house at any time. Second down, nine yards to go. Stanley back to Plass competes to Hunter. Hunter finds a little bit of pay dirt as he... Is driven out of bounds at about the 48-yard line of Morgan State. And it's looking a little too easy against Morgan State here. Um, this is setting up, or it's looking like in the early stages, what would be a long drive. And then what you're looking at from the get-go, the beginning of the game, pretty much your defense is tired. That'll bring up third down, six yards to go. Florida A&M ball marked on the Morgan State 47-yard line. Stanley back to pass, and he throws that one a little bit low intended for Marcus Williams. And with that, the Rattlers are going to plant. Had a great opportunity to keep this drive going, and uh, Stanley is probably kicking himself in the foot there. Yeah, it's a little bit tough for him. He uh, really had a baseball-sized type bruise on his back in the North Carolina a and game, so it could be affecting him a little bit, although the Rattlers are coming off a bye. Chris Ferdue punched the ball deep, and it's going to go out of bounds. Great punt by the young man who leads to FCS in punting. And that's going to put him at the six-yard line. So the Rattlers turned the ball over on downs. Welcome back to Bragg Stadium here in Tallahassee as Morgan State runs their first ball up the middle. And Looks will like lose yards. On that play, that'll bring up second downs and about 11 yards to go and for that, the Bears. That was the senior, Elijah Watkins, coming in from the defensive end position. Uh, but just for a second, Melvin, uh, let's talk about streak storylines and sidelines, which quarterback for Morgan State hadn't seen much of. DeAndre Harris has been the Bears starting QB for 10 straight games uh, dating back to November 4th, 2017. And there's a fumble and the Rattlers are signaling that they have the ball and they do. <laughs> and it's going to be a touchdown. The Florida a &M defense comes up big in their first series. I'm, I'm waiting for this replay to see exactly what happened there, but whatever it was, whether it was a fumbled handoff or uh, miscommunication between the center and quarterback, the ball was dropped in the end zone. That's a fumble, and it looks like it was recovered handoff. in there by DeMonte Moore for Florida A&M as the Rattlers are on the board with 11 minutes and 13 seconds 
remaining in the first quarter. <laughs> a big turn in action. Just as I mentioned his name, uh, yeah. he hands it off to the running back. Just the it it, it happens, um, but that's what coaches have you work on before the game. The the simple handoff and it falls right there on the goal line. Rattler scoop it up and score. And right here, if you look, it's Joshua. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium where the Florida a and Rattlers just got on the board. We have a 7 to nothing score. Florida a and recovered a fumble in the end zone. That fumble was recovered by DeMonte Johnson. And the Rattlers go up 7 to nothing. A nice start for the defense, Afonso. And a nice stop there on the kickoff return. Had an opportunity to bounce it left but wrapped up. But, yes, uh, what we've talked about time and time again for this Rattler defense is their big front four or five or six or however many hungry guys they have in that rotation. Uh, but whether it's Crutchfield or, or someone else, uh, we've gotten accustomed to watching these big guys get through that line and make plays for their coach. So the Bears will come out, and the ball will be spotted at the 21-yard line. For their second possession on the afternoon, 11 minutes and 7 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Florida and M7, Morgan State 0. And I don't know if this will be a free play. DeAndre Harris is or attempted to take advantage of it possibly. Let's see what the refs call this. Looked like there was a little bit of movement mm -hmm. on the line I don't for know. the Bears. No. That movement was unwarranted or forced by yes. the Rattler defender, and that will be an offsides penalty against the Rattlers. So it's going to bring up first down and five yards to go for Morgan State. They're going to place the ball down at the 25-yard line, 11 minutes and two seconds remaining in the first quarter. And Harris on a keeper. Fights his way down to about the 30-yard line. He's close to a, a Morgan State first down. I believe, yep, ref's telling him to move the chains. When do you see a quarterback sacrifice his body and fall forward like that? Uh, I, I mean, Harris isn't exactly a, a, a big guy, a, a, a Tebow-sized guy back there. So um, just a lot of heart from the guy to see him get that first down right there for his team. DeAndre Harris, a 6'4", 210-pound junior out of Washington High School in Washington, Georgia. First down, 10 yards to go, Morgan State. And the give is up the middle to Joshua Chase, who finds a little bit of running room as he's brought down at about the 37-yard line. And that's just a great job there by the lineman and the running back as well, being patient and waiting for those holes to open. Uh, but there are three senior linemen on this line for... Morgan State didn't show on that goal line fumble there, but um, sure Harris has been having fun behind these guys all season. Second down and about four for Morgan State. Yeah, this will be called dead as we have a flag coming in. Okay. So that's going to bring up second down for Morgan State. Is it too soon to bring out the confetti? <laughs> Are we going to have a, another penalty party here in Bragg Stadium? There has been laundry <laughs> on the field early. Yes. Second down, eight yards to go, Morgan State. Empty backfield as Harris is looking to pass, and it's going to be incomplete. And he had a lot of heat in there. Did a great job there of just finding someone to throw it at and not costing them an interception or losing 10 yards on the sack. 
But again, that's Crutchfield coming from nowhere else than the defensive line. <laughs> Third down, nine yards to go. Morgan State. Ball is marked on the 31 yard line of the Bears. Harris back to pass. Looking, looking, and he finds a man at about a 38-yard line. Looks like he's going to be a little bit short of the first down. It depends on this mark right here by the referee. Now, I do believe, yeah. They're going to give him the first down. Initially, he definitely had the first down, but I believe he ran back on his own and then was tackled, but... Nonetheless, it was placed in a position where they got the first. First down, 10 yards to go. The give is up the middle. And the running back finds some room. On the play, another first down from Oregon State. Looks like this offense is beginning to run to wear down on this defense. Once you're out there for so many consecutive plays, you just you get fatigued. That was Jordan Riggins on the carry. A run left. And it looks like another flag is down on the field at about the 43 yard line. As that run left was wrapped up after about a gain of, yeah, about three. Let's see what this is all about. So the call is holding against Julius Duart. And that'll knock him back 10 yards. So the challenge is steep now for Morgan State. First down, 21 yards to go. Ball marked on the Bears, 48-yard line. Harris back to pass, looks. And he's going to just throw that away. Harris, uh, he's been with this program for a while. He does have trust in this offensive line or in his offensive line. And so maybe that'll aid him. But he's going to be getting pressured all day. Um, thus far, he's been hurried uh, at least four times. He's been hit at least two or three times. And we still have eight minutes to go in the first well, he's a young man that is connected on 74 of 143 passes for 889 yards, and that would include five touchdowns. So the young man has some talent as he's back to pass. He's looking, he's looking, and this one seems like there was a miscommunication there between him and the receiver. I'm not sure if he overthrew that or if he overthrew it on purpose uh, because it looked like if he did throw it to the person that was intended to, it would have been a pick six. Um, either way, broken play. And now they're in a position where it's third and long. Third down, 21 yards to go for the Morgan State Bears, who had actually advanced the ball into Rattler territory. And after a holding penalty, find themselves at a 48-yard line of the Bears. Harris back to pass. He's looking, he's looking, he's got time. And he breaks away, he looks, and he's going to be hit. And he completes the ball down to a Morgan State receiver at about the 46-yard line of Florida a and but it's not going to be enough. And that's Bailey for the Bears. Tried to break a tackle, but the defense knew what they needed to do, just keep him from getting 21 yards, and he didn't get anywhere close. Is that the punt for Morgan State? Is it? Nicholas O'Shea, a 5'8", 165-pound freshman out of Detroit, Michigan, West Bloomfield High School. And he kicks, and the ball is going to go out of bounds at around the 16-yard line where the Florida a and Rattlers would take over there. Morgan State special teams effort is one of the tops in the conference. Back to Bryant Stadium where Florida a m leads Morgan State 7 to nothing. Rattlers on a first down and 10. Hand the ball up the middle as they start their second possession on the day. 
And now the Bears do have some seniors on that defensive line there as well. And uh, they showed it not biting on that. Azende Ray fake and eating up Stanley at the line of scrimmage. Second down, nine yards to go, Florida A&M. The ball is marked on the 17-yard line as the Rattlers set the attack. And it's a flip back to Stanley who goes deep, finds a man across the middle complete. Rattler first down at it, about the 44-yard line. Xavier Smith, if he, yeah, he's mad about it. If he could have kept his footing, he's one of those electrifying guys in open space who could have made 30, 40, or even a touchdown happen right there. Big play for the Rattlers. Ball is going to be marked at about the 41-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. We have six minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter as Florida A&M is driving. Stanley looks, and that pass is incomplete. And that's a timing play right there. Stanley has to throw it at a time, at a spot. Receiver didn't get his head around in time. And that'll bring up second and ten. Rattlers in the house, waving. <laughs> Second down, 10 yards to go, Florida A&M. Ball mark at the Rattler 41-yard line. Florida A&M up seven to nothing. After the Rattlers recovered a fumble in the end zone. Stanley gives the ball off to a Rattler who finds some pay dirt and he's still running. He's running and he's gonna be brought down as the Bishop. <laughs> is in the house. Ladies, hold on to your bonnets <laughs> as he runs downfield. Uh, the Bears are happy they could corral him there. Great play by the, is that the safety? Yep, slows him down for the linebacker to catch up. Uh, but that's another guy, just like Xavier Smith, who can make something electrifying happen in open space. Pass complete in there. To Xavier Smith. To Xavier Smith. <laughs> Florida A&M on an impressive drive. Five minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And the Rattlers are driving. Ball is marked at the Bear 22-yard line. Don't be surprised if we see Bonnet here again. Which we don't. Stanley back to pass, looking, looking toward the middle. And it is caught. Or is it? Touchdown. That would have been a great grab. A great grab by the Rattler receiver who took the ball from the defender. That was great defense by the Bears. He was there, perfect position, got his hand on the ball. But uh, when you have a guy like Chad Hunter, who can adjust in the air, and he, he just adjusts and catches the ball, touchdown. Look at this. Chad <laughs> Hunter. Would you look at that? Great hands by this young man as Yahi Ali is set for the point after. Kick is up. Kick is good. Florida AM takes a 14 to nothing lead with four minutes and 53 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Quarter. Rattler fans excited. Watch this play. Tremendous. Got to be quicker than that. The ball ricochets off of the defensive mm -hmm. player's hand. And great adjustment. That's the difference between a receiver and a great receiver. Rattlers impressive as they go up 14 to nothing. Four minutes and 53 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. As Florida in with a mixture of plays. A couple of runs by Bonnet. Big play down the middle to Xavier Smith. And that 21-yard completion to Chad Hunter.
kickoff lands at about the nine yard line and gets no further than the 11. Jordan Cofield brought down on the play as the was he not? Right, I don't think the whistle running. was blown. He's still running. And He's that's going to be a touch now? That's going to be signaled a touchdown by Morgan State. Strange happenings here at Bryant Stadium. This has to go to replay. The refs are talking about it. Now, Cofield is hit. He appears to be down right there. This is going to be a question of oh, whether his it look, knee. It looks like his knee was down right I, here. Here. Yep. Before well, he flipped over the right there, right there, right there. His knee is down. It will depend on this discussion that's going on at midfield with the MEAC officials. Everyone in the stadium thought he was down, but the young man had the presence of mind to keep moving. And the defense is walking down to the goal line, so I believe that the referee, well, they have the whole group of referees in the uh, midfield right now. Okay. So the Bears just getting some cardio there. A little bit. That was Jordan Cofield, a 5'7", 160-pound freshman out of Owen Neal, Maryland, Newtown High School, who well. had everybody on his feet <laughs> because it looked like he just returned the ball for about 87 yards for a touchdown, but they ruled that his knee was down, and it's going to be first down, 10 yards to go. Morgan State. They're going to mark this ball at about the 11-yard line. If any NFL recruiters are out looking for a 90-yard sprinter, I got somebody for you. That would be Jordan Kofi. <laughs> <laughs> so DeAndre Harris brings the Bears out. Rattlers up 14 to nothing. Baby Rattlers in the house. And the Bears want nothing else than to get some points on the board, uh, make this a manageable game again. They believe if the Rattlers get the ball again without a field goal or a, or a touchdown, they could push this out of control. Rattlers with the megaphone fired up after a big-time play by Chad Hunter. And we have a pause in the action on the field right now. Florida a and 14, Morgan State 0. Four minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And we're set to go. The give is up to middle to the Morgan State running back. And that looks like Jordan Riggins, a young man that was actually listed number three on the depth chart, getting some carries after the fumble that cost a touchdown early. And uh, Riggins, uh, though he did come into this game, is uh, a third on the depth chart. The give again is to Riggins, and he finds his way for maybe two yards. It's going to bring up third down, about seven yards to go for Morgan State. Yep, he did not uh, have a rushing attempt last game, and, and so far he's been the workhorse. Well, that fumble by Joshua Chase that resulted in a touchdown for Florida a and &M. They probably were a little bit upset with the young man. And he also had a fumble last week that was lost as well. So that's two weeks in a row for him. That will produce a Mr. Riggins. <laughs> Harris back to pass. He's looking, he's looking, he's got some time. As he rolls out, he's going to keep the ball flagged down on the play in the area of holding as the flag is uh, about the eight-yard line. A little bit too much time back there. It's sketchy. You're almost certain about what this call is. and Unfortunately for Harris, he had a, got upended for no reason. Three minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first. Ooh. Ooh. 
That's going to knock him back to the 4.9 yard line. <laughs> and the holding call was on Jordan Riggins. Pick your poison. And we are talking venom, right? <laughs> <laughs> Third down and about 12 yards to go. Morgan stay. And uh, mishandles the ball again. He gets it back, throws it out. And it is complete to Dalen Baldwin, 6'3", 210 sophomore out of Southfield, Michigan. Once again, Rattlers weren't playing to for an incompletion there, just playing the sticks. So easy reception for the Bears there, but it still results in the three and out. Nicholas O'Shea back to punt the ball for Morgan State. Chad Hunter standing on about his 45-yard line, set to receive this punt. Young man out of Tallahassee, Rickards High, has been exciting, and he's going to feel this ball. And he fell down at about the 45-yard line, but Hunter is a multi-talented player. And you know he is because the coach didn't lose his cap for him accepting that ball right there even though he was falling. Uh, also, in addition to that, the Bears ranked number four in the conference in kickoff coverage and in, in, in special teams efforts. So this is not the team that you want to make a mistake with. Correct. Rattlers looking at a first down, 10 yards to go. Ball marked on the Florida a and 45-yard line. Two minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Florida a and 14, Morgan State 0. The pass is complete out in the flat to a Rattler receiver. Xavier Smith. And he gets very close to a first down on first down and just, just inches away from making the man miss there. And again, that would have been a touchdown. Second down, two yards to go. Florida A&M ball marked at the Morgan State 47-yard line. And the give is to Smith on the end, and he's going to fight his way across the 40 to the 42-yard line for a Rattler first down. And that's speed. The defensive end knew what was coming, kept his contain, but it's just too slow. <laughs> One minute and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Florida A&M 14, Morgan State 0. Rattlers first down and 10 yards to go. The ball is marked at the Bears 44-yard line. As Stanley Gives the ball up the middle to Ricky Hinderless, who finds a little bit of running room. He's still running. And a nice, impressive 10-yard run by Ricky Hinderless. What back was that? Number four <laughs> for the Rattlers. I'm pretty sure Willie Simmons has about two or three guys on practice squad he could bring up and f perform, too. It's, it's, it's almost outrageous. You shouldn't have this many backs. And we have a Morgan State Bear down. So we'll take a break in the action as we figure out what's going on. 58 seconds remaining as Willie Simmons is talking with his players right now. And this is a good time right now to look at the polls from the Box to Row HBCU poll as the Florida a Rattlers are ranked as the number one team in the country, followed at number two by North Carolina a and Alcorn State checks in at number three. Southern is four. Tennessee State checks in at number five and Prairie View a and with a three and four record is checking in at six. That is completed by Howard, Bethune, Cookman, Grambling, and North Carolina Central. 
So Florida A&M, first down, 10 yards to go. Ball marked at the bare 37-yard line. 40 seconds left in this first quarter. Stanley flips the ball off. That's going to be a loss. Broken play. Bear loss sniffed it out. Yes. The ball was complete to Chad Hunter. Combination of the lineman or linebacker, I'm sorry, and uh, corner crashing in on that. So and they lose yardage. This is unfamiliar territory for Florida A&M, number one on a national poll. So the Rattlers doing very well this year. Second down, 11 yards to go. Stanley back to pass, looking, looking, and he fires, and it's going to be knocked down on the play by a Morgan State defensive back. And that's the second pass. Stanley just led short. Here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Florida a and is leading 14 to Free play. Nothing. Free play. Uh, and that was all sized by the Bears. Stanley tried to take advantage, but shut down. And that's Devin Hebron. 6'2", 220 red shirt, freshman. The big guy making a freshman mistake. He'll make up for it in the next four years. Looks like it's going to be a third down and about six yards to go for Florida A&M. The ball is marked on the Morgan State 26-yard line, 27-yard line. Rattlers threatening. Stanley back to pass. He's looking, he's looking, he's under some pressure. Flag down on the play as he throws toward the end zone and it's gonna overshoot intended for Marcus Williams. Marcus Williams on the play. I'm not sure what this flag will be. It's in the backfield, so it's in the area of holding. Uh, but that's now the third pass by Stanley that Yep, now it'll be holding. Uh, but it will be declined, and that's going to be fourth down. They are in field goal range, so that's an interesting decision there by the Bears. Um, but as I was saying, uh, another pass just simply got away from Stanley. Coming on for the Rattlers is Yahi Ali. Ball marked on the 30. This looks like this is going to be about a 47-yard attempt for the young man who won the game against North Carolina A&T with three seconds left. Kick is up. Kick is sailing. Kick is good. And that's a questionable decision there by the Bears. Um, if anything, if you allow eight yards on the next play, they're back in the same position on fourth. Otherwise, they're further back if you can come up with the stop. Sixty-two yard field goal to win. Free live TV on American Airlines. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, on the beautiful campus of Florida A&M. Florida A&M 17, Morgan State 0, as Yahi Ali just can kick a 47-yard field goal as the Rattlers extended their lead. And just to update for you, Howard just lost to South Carolina State 27-21. And FAMU doesn't have that many people left to play, but Howard is next on the schedule. Uh, good news. Good news for the Florida A&M Rattlers, as we stated earlier in the Box to Row media poll. Florida A&M is number one there as well, followed by North Carolina A&T and Alcorn State. And Morehouse comes up here in the 
media poll, they actually include Division II schools. Mm -hmm. So Morehouse is followed by Tennessee State, Bowie State, another Division II school, Grambling, Prairie View Southern, and Benedict. Nope. So okay. interesting poll, but Florida A&M is on top, and that loss by Howard to South Carolina State helps the Rattlers, who go to Washington, D.C. next weekend to face the Bison in the nation's capital. And they also look well on their way to a win here in their own home stadium right now. So combined with that and the confidence going into next week, I think they have the potential to climb into potentially the top 25 for FCS, seeing that they were um, within the five that were being thought about. Um, they had, uh, let me see, North Dakota State is 7-0 and at number one. Kennesaw State 6-1 and at number two. Um, and then further down the list, Florida A&M received 125 votes. The give is to Joshua Chase, who finds running room on the outside. He runs for about eight yards. That's going to be a bare first down. I guess he's chasing Riggins for his position back. They're moving in and out after that holding call by Riggins. And actually, the starter there earlier this year was Will King, a 5'9", 180-pound redshirt senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. So the Bears are driving. The ball is marked at the 38-yard line. The give again is to Chase. He's becoming a workhorse, but he's met by a host of Rattlers up front. And it started with the crutch of this defense, Crutchfield, number 91 filling up holes or uh, keeping the running back from getting open in the outside and wraps him up there. He had assistance in there from Demontre Moore and a few others. Second down and about 10 yards to go for Morgan State. Ball is marked at the 37-yard line of the Bears. Ball is tipped. And is this a live ball? The Rattlers are looking at it, but it's going to bring up third down for Morgan State. Great play there. Showing the vertical leap. Some, someone, someone let me know if this man played basketball in high school. <laughs> Third down, 10 yards to go. Morgan State, ball marked on the 37-yard line. Harris back to pass, looking, looking across the middle, and the ball is going to be broken up by a Rattler defensive back, and the Bears will have to turn the ball over on downs. And Harris just floated that ball over the middle. Uh, he's, he must... He has to be happy with the fact that it wasn't an interception, or or maybe not. It would have served as a mini punt, uh, but here they have the punt team out for him now. Nicholas O'Shea is back to punt, waiting to receive the ball around the 33-yard line is Chad Hunter. And this ball is going to bounce, and a nice Morgan State roll as it comes down around the 18-yard line in Florida A&M will start from there. Let's get out here. As the Rattler fans are shaking up, welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee. Florida A&M 17, Morgan State 0. Rattlers take over. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball marked at the 17. Stanley back to pass, being pressured, dumps the ball off to a Rattler receiver who is upended. That is Deshaun Smith that was upended by a Bear defender. Great job there of making the first guy miss, though. Usually... That's a big hit, and that's a highlight play for the defender. So he avoided one highlight and was in the next <laughs> defender's. He's going to bring up second down at about seven yards to go. Make that eight for Florida A&M. 
ball is marked at about the 20 yard line. Give is to Deshaun Smith who fights its way across the 30 for a pickup of about three yards on the play. It's gonna move the Rattlers into the area of third down and five. Patient, patient running. The world went now. Marching 100 of Florida A&M, a band that has been selected to participate in the Rose Bowl Parade, and they're collecting funds to go out there and represent not only Florida A&M, but the state of Florida. Third down for the Rattlers, and about five yards to go. As Stanley is back to pass and finds Chad Hunter, and he was met he knew, at about the 44-yard line. He knew that hit was coming. That's definitely a catch he could have and should have made, but he knew that hit was coming. If you're going to take the hit anyway, as my coach used to say, you might as well come down with it. No doubt. So back to punt the ball for the Rattlers is Chris Fadul. He's a remain, he right now is the top hunter in FCS, averaging 48.1 yards per kick on 27 tries. He's had 12 kicks for over 50 yards. He's having an outstanding year here for Florida a and And that's what they need here, and they won't get it. The ball is going to go out of bounds at about the 39-yard line. So Morgan State will take over at about the 40-yard line as the referee is looking to spot the ball. And he's standing at about his 38-yard line, and he's going to put the ball down right there. And Morgan State will come out first down and 10 yards to go from that point. 11 minutes and four seconds remaining in the second quarter. Florida a &M 17, Morgan State zero. And Andre Harris is going to keep the ball for about a four-yard gain as he is brought down at about the 44-yard line. And they trust him on his legs. That was a design QB run, uh, and it did what it needed to do on first down. Second down, six yards to go. Morgan State. Ball is marked at the 42-yard line of the Bears. And the give on the play is to the running back. And that's going to be Riggins. Continuing to switch it out, as you mentioned earlier. And just quickly back to Harris. Uh, he rushed for 11, or he rushed 11 times uh, last week. Now, granted, some of that was uh, scrambling. But some of those are design plays. They really do trust his legs. And Riggins is from Fort Lauderdale, a six-foot junior out of Fort Lauderdale as Harris is back to pass and he's going to be hit and brought down on the play. Luckily for him, he moved up at the last second because Crutchfield was coming to put him on crutches. <laughs> Fourth down for the Bears as Nicholas O'Shea a 5'8", 165-pound freshman out of Detroit gets set to punt the ball. Let's see if the Rattlers try and get this one. Almost dead. Shank the punt. It's going to roll dead at about the 34-yard line of Florida a and &M. I think the kicker was spooked. That was close to a block on that play, and here's Miss Florida A&M and Mr. Fam, you. Pistachios. We're back here in Tallahassee 
Well, Florida A&M leads Morgan State 17 to nothing. Rattlers first down and 10 yards to go. The give is up the middle and looks like Bonnet has found a hole over to the left side of the Morgan State defense. He's brought down into Bear territory. And that's one of the weaknesses of the 5-2. Yes, it does help in the front five. Uh, but if you get past that barrier, there's pretty much no one there. And Bonnet takes advantage of there. Looks like he injured himself on the play. Bishop Bonnet has been nursing a bad ankle. And he may have turned it, Afonso, as he was making that big play there. It's going to bring up first down and 10 yards to go for Florida A&M. Ball is marked on the 47-yard line. Give is up the middle to the Rattler running back who is Matt. Ricky Hinderless is the ball carrier. He's going to lose yards on the play. As the Rattler fans enjoy a, a cold day here in Tallahassee, Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the band is appreciative of that. As the Royal Court marches around. Looking beautiful, representing this illustrious university. Second down, 11 yards to go. Florida A&M. Ball marked on the 46-yard line. Stanley throws across the middle pass intended for his tight end. On that play, that was Tamay Christian, the intended receiver on that play. And the Rattlers desperately, well, maybe not as desperately as Morgan State, but would definitely like to have this conversion here. Don't want to start off this uh, second quarter with two straight three and outs. Third down, 11 yards to go. Florida A&M ball marked on the Florida A&M 46-yard line. Stanley back to pass. He's looking, looking, and he short hops the ball that was intended to Marcus Williams. And the Rattlers were turning the ball over on down. That's that's four passes now. Um, Stanley, as I mentioned before, he threw for a 300 or over 300 uh, yards in his last game, and he just he just misses him there. I don't know if he's thinking too much, um, but I know his, he's going to get with coach on the sideline and trying to figure that his out. His back could be bothering him. Uh, certainly, you did mention that. Yes, with baseball size bruise. Fadu's kick is a boomer, and it is going to go outside the back of the end zone, and Fadu with the kick that's going to turn the ball over to the Bears. And uh, as you mentioned, Bonnet, he definitely did turn that ankle down there. We're attempting to get some updates. As soon as we do, we'll go down there and let you all know what's going on. We're going to go down the field to Deja Martin. All right, thanks, guys. Pleasure to be here as always. What I'm getting from the sideline right now from Kyle, the athletic trainer, is that Bishop Bonham did, in fact, twist his ankle. But what they're going to do is they're just going to tape him right back up and get him right back in the game. The way he's been running, no one could even tell that he's hurting. It's amazing that he's pulling through. We're going to root for him. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deja. And... We were correct. He injured that ankle that's been bothering him most of the season. So they're going to tape him up, and hopefully he'll be back in the game. Meanwhile, we're returning to live action. Morgan State second down, 10 yards to go, and Harris completes the ball out to his running back, who looks like he's close to a first down net at the 30-yard line. And finally, we see someone move the chains as this looked like it was becoming a defensive battle. Rattler fans enjoying the game here on a nice cool day in Tallahassee. The give is up the middle and big play in there by several Rattlers and Morgan State is gonna take a loss on that play. They did not fool the defense. They fooled me though. I was pretty <laughs> sure 32 had the ball. And next thing you know, Second and 12. So Morgan State, 
second down, 12 yards to go. Harris is back, looking, looking, completes the ball, but they're actually going to lose some yardage on the play. It's a bad reception. It's a safe reception. Uh, he may not have known if it was a forward pass or not, so he just caught it. Uh, but like you, like you said, he lost two, three more yards on that play. Third down, 16 yards to go. Morgan State. Ball is marked on the 26-yard line of the Bears. And now Dion Galat is in at the quarterback position. And that was a pretty good pass, just better defensive play, I would say, on behalf of the Rattlers. Elijah Richardson came up with the knockdown there. 6'1", 215-pound defensive back. He's been fairly quiet today, uh, but he, Antonio uh, Miller, and Crutchfield are all guys who we say oftentimes throughout the broadcast. And I'm starting to call this young man's name a lot. Nicholas O'Shea <laughs> is back to punt for Oregon State. And it looks like the Rattlers are going to sell out for this one. Another bad punt but he's going to get the benefit of a roll, and it's going to come down to about the 39-yard line of Florida A&M, and the Rattlers would take over there. Melvin, I think they're taking their chances with the, the low bounce instead of putting it in the hands of Chad Hunter, Xavier Smith, Bishop Bonnet, and so on. And so Marcus forth. Williams, yes. He's an explosive player. As a matter of fact, that receiving core is number one in the MEAC. And you look at that tandem, there is some talent on the Florida A&M's receiving core. I talked with the head coach, Ernest Jones, from Baltimore earlier, and one of the things that concerned him, he said Florida a and is one of the most athletic teams he's seen this year, mm -hmm. and they were concerned about that speed. It's everywhere. First down, 10 yards to go. Rattlers, ball marked at the 39-yard line. Stanley back to pass and completes the ball to a Rattler. I believe that's... Be I believe that's Ray. It is. It is. Azende Ray. And that's not Hemberless, Bowers, Bonnet, or Smith. Or Smith. It's another one. It's Azende Ray, a young man that used to be a running back that <laughs> transitioned to the wide receiver, so the Rattlers are okay. loaded. And certainly want to applaud that young man. He uh, is from the Defuniac Springs area where the Hurricane Michael had a lot going on there. Stanley back to pass. He looks deep. He looks deep. He's going for Marcus Williams and that is a flag. flag. Looks like Receive, he, he, interference. He sort of underthrew him. The receiver tried to turn around and get there and defender didn't turn around and locate the ball. Ran right through him. Easy flag. So Stanley Goes deep for Marcus Williams and defensive pass interference on the play is going to move the Rattlers into Bear territory. As you look at the replay here, you can see that he pretty much grabs him there at the end. And they're going to set the ball down at about the 36-yard line of Morgan State. Stanley flips the ball off to Ray. Ray, a couple of quick moves, and he's still running. Power. He's going to get about a yard on the play. It's going to bring up second down and nine yards to go. Florida eight and a half. He got a lot more yards than he'll get credit for there, but that's an effort the coach will give him credit for every time. Second down, seven yards to go. Florida a and ball marked on the 34-yard line. Stanley with the give up the middle to Deshaun Smith who finds some running room and is brought down at about the 15 yard line of Morgan State <laughs> and then he pops up and runs in the end zone <laughs> I can do it too I can do it too <laughs> Uh, 
and the Rattlers are looking to put an exclamation point on this drive here. Stanley pump fake looks in the end zone wide open. Marcus Williams touchdown. Florida and in. He was wide <laughs> open. Yep, broken play. They've been abusing that swing pass, swing pass, swing pass. Defense sees that. They're ready for it. And then you don't get, see the guy sneak out. Florida a &M extends to a 23 to nothing lead with three minutes and 11 seconds left here in the second quarter as the Rattlers are opening up now. Opportunity to push it to 24-0. Yahi Ali set to take the point after kick it is up and it is good <laughs> rattlers 24 morgan state zero after the 15 yard completion from stanley to marcus williams florida and them looking really good right now fonzo i would say so well on the way to being six and two and it's still undefeated in the mid And uh, you see this uh, band surrounding this field. If you think playtime is over, you got another thing coming. Uh, the often imitated, but never, never successfully duplicated. Are you talking about these young guys? <laughs> no, no. Okay. The the 100 okay. individuals surrounding the football field right now. Um, they go hand in hand with the football team here at Florida a and Everybody's excited at 24 to nothing can do that to a football team. Florida a and looking impressive right now as we have three minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the second one? quarter as the Rattlers, Yahi Ali, gets set to kick off the ball. And it's going to be retrieved by Cofield. He's at his 10. He's got a little bit of running room, and he's going to come down at about the 29-yard line. We do have a flag on the play. Three minutes and six seconds remaining in the second quarter. Florida in M24. Morgan State zero. And a lot of pink in the stadium today as we're celebrating Breast Cancer Month. So you see that around the stadium and a very worthy cause. As often as we compare the game of football to a battle, it's nothing as we have this call coming in. And it's going to be against Morgan State. Uh, but as I was saying, as often as we call this gladiator game a, a battle, it's nothing compared to the diseases that plague uh, grandmothers, mothers, uh, grandfathers, uh, family members, and friends. And uh, we support anybody who has beat it, anybody in their fight. And uh, that's why you see all this pink here in Bragg today. We certainly encourage you to support that cause, a worthy cause. First down, 10 yards to go. Morgan State, the give is up the middle. And it looks like it may be Will King, the running back for Morgan State. It's going to bring up second down and about eight yards to go for the Bears. See what they do here. They hand it off to... Chase. Joshua Chase. Chris. Is the ball carrier. And he gets pretty much nowhere there. And that sets up third and six with two minutes and 30 seconds left in the half. That kind of has me scratching my head. I was pretty sure Coach Jones would want to get the ball in the end zone or in, in a position to score. Clock is ticking, two minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Harris back to pass and incomplete, and Morgan State is going to turn the ball over now on the flip side of that. Florida a and has two minutes and 11 seconds to put up another score. And we don't support bullying, but we, we do support executing your offense and defensive schemes. And that's what it seems to be turning into here. Uh, Fam, you soon will most likely be playing keep away. That young man is getting a lot of air time today. Nicholas O'Shea, the 5'8", 165-pound freshman out of Detroit, Michigan, set to punt. 
Chad Hunter as Wade Fair cat, catch at about the 49 yard lines. He may have been interfered with as the flag is down on the field. This is the generation of flops, and that's definitely what he did there. The ref standing right there didn't call that. I'm not sure if they're going to have the stand. They, it, it looks like they are moving the ball up. It looked like he was interfered with. He called for a fair catch, and there seemed to be contact made with him. Yeah, you know, the, a, a little contact like, hey, man, you, you better be glad you called a fair catch. <laughs> Yeah, a little of that, and he, he flopped. He sold it, and it looks like it's going to work out for them. Oh. Actually, it wasn't uh, interference. It was face mask. Was it? Yep. I'm not sure on who. Um, couldn't have been on the ball carrier, uh, but there it is. And that's going to move the ball down to about the 34-yard line of Morgan State. Two minutes and three seconds remaining in the second quarter. Florida A&M set up in good field position to threaten for another score. If anything, they can come out of this with a field goal as they are already in that range. We have a 24 to nothing score. Florida and him first down and 10 yards to go. Stanley back, dumps the ball off to a Rattler runner who finds some running room as the ball is complete to the Bishop who's back in the house. Oh, yeah, ankles, knees, whatever's hurting. We just throw some dirt on it and get back out there. Bishop Bonnet is the competitor, and with that speed, they couldn't afford it to have him on the sideline. Bishop Bonnet. The 5'7", 165 pound running back out of Jacksonville. Stanley back to pass, another receiver wide open. And it's a touchdown for Florida a and Is that Xavier Smith? It is. And he's having a big game along with 12 or 18 other of his teammates. And they're beginning to pile it on. And Mr. Stanley <laughs> is having a, a good football game. I guess he's making up for all of those incomplete passes. He's like, you know what, guys? I got you. Florida a and extends to a 30 to nothing lead with one minute and 37 seconds. Rattlers go on a two-play, 32-yard drive, and they're going to halt the action on this point after attempt by Yahi Ali. I think it's going to be a substitution issue. Yep, a legal substitution in Morgan State. So just in case, y'all, he was a bit too far from the goal post. Gotcha. I'm going to get the Rattlers a few inches closest there, or closer there, and see if he can knock it in. We have a 30 to nothing score here in Tallahassee with one minute and 37 seconds remaining. In the second quarter, Yahi Ali set to kick the point after. Kick is up. Kick is good. Florida A&M 31, Morgan State 0, and an impressive drive by Florida A&M. Impressive, and I, I, I believe Willie Simmons, as the cannon goes off, I believe the Willie Simmons quick strike offense is officially in full effect. 31 points before halftime. This is impressive by Florida AM. 31 to nothing. And the Rattler fans are shaking it up here in Bragg Stadium in Tallahassee. Would you say this place is lit? <laughs> I would, I would, especially after the cannon went off. No. Definitely. <laughs> 31 to nothing, Florida AM. One minute and 37 seconds remaining in the second quarter as the fans are enjoying themselves. Watch this pass. A nice pass to Smith. And Stanley is threading the needle in that defense right now. It's such a balanced offense. The, the defense doesn't know what's coming. They have to be prepared for everything, and there's, that's very hard to do. 
Um, and right now, the Rattler offense is taking advantage as they kick it off. Yahi Ali kicks the ball off. The flag is going to be thrown, and that's going to bring up a penalty against yeah. Florida and m Morgan State will take over at the 35-yard line. And they're going to look to capitalize off of this. They have one minute and 37 seconds to go. The Bears have struggled today on offense. And so right now you would think with one minute and 37 seconds to go, they're going to put the ball in the air. But Florida a and really piling on the points here today in Tallahassee. I'm not sure what Morgan State is going to do. They can't seem to get anything going. Uh, they switched the quarterback um, and still can't get any completion. So uh, let's see. Harris back to pass, looking, looking, finds a man at about the 49. And that's uh, Galat. They squeezed him in there. They squeezed in the second string quarterback now. So the Bears are moving. One minute, 27 seconds remaining. Second quarter, ball marked on the 49-yard line of Morgan State. Harris back to pass, being pressured. He keeps the ball. He's running. We have a flag down back at the 40-yard line. Yep. And with that front four, 55 is calling for the hold. He doesn't see the penalty back there. You got it, big fella. Uh, with that front four, if, you, if you're in that backfield for more than three or four seconds, it's, it's going to be a holding call. Or a sack. So take your pick, quarterback. That is going to move the ball back to around the 43-yard line. And that's going to bring up a first down and about 17 for Morgan State. Make that first and 20. The ball is marked on the 39-yard line of the Bears. And this man, Stanley, is having a big day for Florida a and &M. Harris back to pass, looking, looking, finds a man open at about the 47-yard line. Pass is complete to Dalen Baldwin, a 6'3", 210-pound sophomore out of Southfield, Michigan. I'd like to see the Rattlers force a stop here. Galat has time, floats it up and out. Smart pass. And that'll stop the clock at 36 seconds. Third down, nine yards to go. Morgan State. Ball is marked at midfield. 36 seconds remaining in the first half. This is where the Rattlers have to be prepared for the big play. The lot back to pass completes the ball. And after juggling it for about four yards, <laughs> the receiver comes down with it. Looks like Brendan Easley, a wide receiver, who's back home in his home state. He's from Orlando, Florida. The city beautiful. And uh, those guys in Orlando aren't too, doing too bad for themselves either. Not at all. The Rattler fans celebrate here in Bragg Stadium. 27 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Florida AM and 31. Morgan State, zero. And with Howard losing today, Florida A&M is starting to look impressive as far as winning their first MEAC title since 2010. The only, the only thing, the only game that fans were really worried about was Morgan State uh, because they did beat NCAT. Granted, they thought it was an off game for NCAT, but still. Um, and it, it seems that... There will be no more competition for the Rattlers for the remainder of this year if they continue to play like this. There's always that team at the west end of the state, make that the east end of the state, on I-4, Bethune Cook. They have beaten the Rattlers seven 
times in a row until Florida A&M handled Bethune-Cookman College. Melvin, I, I love the classic. I love the competitiveness, the rivalry, but this year, I don't think it's much of, much of a question of whether that seven-year streak will end or not. Well, Venom may have something to say about that as he is shaking it up for the Rattler fans <laughs> here at Bragg Stadium. We have a 31 to nothing. Florida A&M lead over Morgan State. 20 seconds remaining in the game. And Dion Gallat is the quarterback for Morgan State. He's a young man that's a 6'3", 230-pound freshman out of Largo, Maryland, Riverdale Baptist High School. And he's back to pass, and he completes the pass down to his receiver, who's still fighting for yardage. And he's going to be brought down at about the nine-yard line, 12 seconds remaining in the quarter. And we have a Morgan State player down on the field at around the 25-yard line. And they're going to help him up. That is an offensive lineman, Kevin Calls. He's a six-foot, 300-pound freshman out of Miami, Florida. So we're calling a lot of players names that are from the state of Florida. Morgan State is recruiting heavily in the state of Florida. Not just Morgan State. Uh, it, it starts at a much earlier age than college. Um, Texas, Florida, this, this southeast area, I know that's a big gap between us, but uh, this is where a lot of football talent comes from up to the pros, so I'm not surprised. Young man. Getting it on. <laughs> in Bragg Stadium. Shake it. Shake it. Yeah. Uh -oh. Not a care in the world. Now, that's a future wide receiver <laughs> for Florida AM. Oh, man. Morgan State. He throws the ball down to stop the clock. Ten seconds. Now nine seconds remaining in the quarter. Florida AM 31. Morgan State zero. Nine seconds remaining. So Morgan State has to be careful to not accidentally run the, if they don't score, don't accidentally run the rest of the time out as that takes away your opportunity to score at all. Dion Gallant is your quarterback for Morgan State. Ball is marked at the 17-yard line. He's going to break down and he's running and he's fighting his way down and three seconds, two seconds remaining on the clock. Morgan State. And they're going to go for it. Time out has been called okay. by Morgan State. Two seconds left. This will give them an opportunity to attempt a field goal. Ball is marked down at about the three-yard line. Now the question is whether Coach Jones' head is in getting points on the board or actually coming back in this game, um, and in which case he would most likely go for a seven. Didn't tell. And Galat is going to stay out on the field. So they're going to go for a touchdown here. They've made that decision. Dion Galata, 6'3", 230 pound freshman. All or nothing. Two seconds remaining on the clock. This will effectively be the last play of the half. The lock back, he fires, he's looking, and the ball is caught by a Morgan State player, but out of bounds, it's not gonna count. So Florida and him. We'll hold the Morgan State Bears 31 to nothing. It's the Florida AM lead. As we'll be going down on the field to Deja Martin. It's, we're going to give her a little time to locate, Coach. He's caught up in the madness of yes. everything. He, he is up 31 0, but with no further ado, down to Deja on the field. All right, thank you guys so much. I'm here with Coach Willie Simmons. Coach, right now you are up 31 to zero. What are you going to do to keep them from scoring in the second half? Well, we just got to play assignment football. 
you know, um, again, we talk about playing 60 minute game. We want to play 30. There's still a lot of football left to play. Are we expected to see some new faces come off the sideline to the second half? Well, you know, a lot of that depends on how we come out in the third quarter. Uh, we challenge our guys um, every game. If we have a chance to get some young guys in or guys that haven't played a whole lot, but, but that means that we have to come out in the third quarter and really continue to play good football. All right. Thank you, Coach. Good luck to you. That's all I have for you guys. Back to you. 31 to nothing. Opportunity is everywhere. All you have to do to find it is get out here. Welcome to Bragg Memorial Stadium. We're at halftime where Florida A&M leads 31 to nothing over Morgan State. And Afonso, Florida A&M is just really cooking on <laughs> offense right now. <laughs> Coming into the game, we said the most important thing for them was to stay away from penalties. Throughout this season, on the offensive end, whether it's the running or passing game, they haven't had problems with the other teams stopping them. It's them getting in their own way. And today, 31-0 says that they haven't done that. Stanley has had a big time game. He's found wide open receivers. Chad Hunter, Marcus Williams. Florida AM's offense is kicking. It's kicking, and there were a few passes that he missed, so you can add about 70, 85 yards uh, to what he already has amounted to. And this is going to be a great game. We'll see how far Simmons keeps him in as he was talking about getting some new guys in there in the third, but it's going to be a good football game. Now, Morgan State, on the other hand, has just quite simply struggled today. They haven't been able to get down into Florida A&M until late there in the second quarter, but they've changed their quarterback. They've gone to Galat from Durant Harris. So talk a little bit about Morgan State. I'm not – at this point, I don't know whether Coach Jones' perspective is to come back or to start working on next week and uh, that he could be – it's it's kind of in between. I'm not sure where exactly his head is, but uh, the the first string quarterback, the second string quarterback, running backs, they're struggling. It doesn't matter. Uh, this defense is doing a great job of showing up and making plays when they need to be made. Well, when you combine that with the Howard loss today, you can see that Florida A&M is really edging toward that title that they haven't won since 2010. So they're positioning themselves really good right now and this first half has been good. Definitely has been good and some would argue this was the last of the competition that they would actually see. Um, so if they just don't underestimate anyone they could finish out strong. Well we'll be back later. Right now we have a 31 to nothing score at halftime. You're watching the MEAC football on ESPN3. Is get out here. Seventy three hours. That's the time frame from when Michael was named as a tropical storm with winds just over 40 miles per hour to the Category 4 hurricane that it became, with winds sustained at 155 miles per hour, just 2 miles per hour under a Category 5. Completely devastated. Every street looked like, looks like a war zone, like a bomb went off. It just is devastating. No one was ever focusing on the small areas that were just beyond Panama City. Uh, so therefore, you know, when we woke up Thursday morning, there was nobody there but us, right? It was just a community there. There was no, you know, there, there was no National Guard. There was no, you know, uh, rescue workers. It was just family and communities that was trying to really trying to comprehend what had just happened. We met the residents of this destroyed home, as many on the coastline were. But Michael's powerful storm surge is underscored by their home being displaced over 450 feet to this location across the highway in Mexico Beach. 72 hours after landfall, and with devastation all around, the Rattlers would win their biggest game in two decades. Immediately following the game, head coach Willie Simmons turns his attention back to the Florida Panhandle. We want to dedicate this win to everyone affected by Hurricane Michael. 
Our thoughts and our prayers are with you. God bless you. Volunteers are very important in the community. Any any hand, additional hands to help out um, and help serve and, and provide anything that the folks need is always a, bless, a blessing. Folks that's come up and said that every entrance, entrance to their house is completely blocked by trees down and there's just people out here delivering meals to them and that's been wonderful. What follows is the very definition of humanity. From the campus of Florida A&M University, outreach became everyone's purpose, led by Florida State Representative Ramon Alexander. FAMU Athletics joined in the immediate need for volunteers, assisting the Salvation Army and other independent outreach missions. Today has really been just kind of a long day of giving. We started off today, we had a breast cancer walk where we also took donations for this hurricane relief project today. And it was a lot of long phone calls this week trying to get everything organized, but it was all worth it in the end. We had some great sponsors. We had a gentleman down in Miami sponsor $1,000 to be able to come and donate a lot of the supplies that we did donate today. So at the end of the day, it's all for a good cause and it's all worth it. Well, I tell you, you know, we, our hearts go out to, you know, so many of the citizens and residents within the Big Bend area to include all of those who uh, live throughout the areas of Mariana where we are here today as well as Apalachicola and all the way up to Panama City and Pensacola and of course when this devastating storm Michael hit one of the first things that I thought about was my humble beginners in Miami uh, living through Andrew and several storms over the years so I said it's just something that we have to do on behalf of the university as an extension with the fam you cares that Dr. Larry Robinson and drive. It will be quite a while before the panhandle fully recovers, but with the love, donations, and outreach of various entities on the campus, it is clear to those in need that FAMU cares. All you have to do to find it is get out here. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium. We're here at halftime. Florida AM is up 31 to nothing. And the teams are warming up right now. Florida AM has been very impressive in the first half. As we stand by for Deja Martin. Thirty-one to nothing, Florida A and M. Here in Tallahassee, as the Florida A and M band and the drum major is performing. All right, and what we're going to do is go down to the field where Deja has Coach Jones. All right, thank you guys so much. Coach, right now you're facing nine penalties. How are you and the team going to overcome and get some points on the board for second half? Just a very undisciplined football team. We're going to try to play our base call on offense, base call on defense, and that's all we're going to do. What is what, what would you personally say is the most challenging part of today's match? One more time. What would you personally say is the most challenging part of today's match? Getting our guys to line up, just execute a base fundamental call, and we're not doing that. We're cutting guys loose on defense, we're missing blocks on offense, and we're getting penalties all over the place. All right, well, thanks so much, Coach, and good luck to you guys. All right, that's all I have for you guys. Back to you. Thanks, Deja, and as you may imagine, it's very tough for Coach Jones right now, being down 31 to nothing to Morgan State. So I'm sure he talked to his team at halftime about execution. And they seem to move the ball better with Galat at quarterback. Uh, yeah, he made some, some better throws here and there. Um, but it ultimately comes back to this Rattler defense. Uh, regardless of who you have back there, they're causing problems. Um, but if anybody can get it together, uh, I do believe in Ernest T. Make it an ass. <laughs> All 
Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Florida a and holds a 31 to nothing lead over Morgan State. And it was all Florida a and in the first half as Stanley was able to connect with Chad Hunter, Xavier Smith, as Florida a and has looked very impressive. Uh, as I was saying before we cut to break, Ernest T. Jones uh, joined the Bears as a defensive coordinator in 2016 and was previously a JUCO head coach at ASA Miami, uh, worked at Connecticut, Notre Dame, University of Buffalo, Cincinnati, the list goes on. Uh, so he's familiar with these situations and what to do in them. So we're back here at Bragg Memorial Stadium. As a flag was thrown and Morgan State is coming out and they are going to start their drive as they place the ball down on the 35 yard line. And the give is up the middle to the running back who is met by the interior line of the Florida A&M Rattlers. That was Joshua Chase on the play for and, Morgan State. And Elijah Richardson, he actually, he got there so fast you would think he was on the line, but he was just filling his hole as a linebacker. Uh, great job there. Second down, 11 yards to go, Morgan State. The give is up the middle to Chase again, and again he is met by several Rattlers. I believe that was Antonio Miller, if I'm not mistaken. It was. And it's going to bring up third down. 11 yards to go for Morgan State. So the struggle that this offense was going through in the first half seems to have carried over. Ball is complete to a Morgan State receiver who breaks a tackle and has run out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. It's going to be a first down for Morgan State. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Yes. Beasley got exactly what he needed. And one extra yard. Monticef Belly was the receiver on the play. He's a 6'1", 190-pound junior out of Capitol Hill. It's my honor. Bailey, not Beasley, excuse me. <laughs> Gain of about five yards on the play for the Bears as they have started out this second half with positive momentum. Well, that's the second play that I would consider positive. They kind of got bailed out on third down the last one there, and then here, swallowed up again. So Chase is stopped for maybe a one-yard gain. They placed the ball down at midfield. It's going to be third down and five for Morgan State. As the Bears are down 31 to nothing to Florida A&M, 12 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Galat finds a man complete, and he looks like he may have another first down for Morgan State. Guess how much he got it by? A yard. <laughs> Two conversions on third down, both for one yard over what was necessary. Impressive drive by the Bears as they continue their drive into Rattler territory. The give is up the middle to Chase, who's met by several Rattlers. And it's going to bring up second down and 10 yards to go. Morgan State. Demontre Moore in on the tackle for the Rattlers. Rattler fans in the house. Got a lot back. He keeps the ball. He's up the middle. He's running. He's running. He's still alive and he incomplete pass. That's going to bring up another third down. See what they can do here. Well, they have uh, converted on their last two possessions. And so Morgan State 
third and 10 yards to go. Ball is placed down at the 43 yard line of Florida A&M. Galat is back to pass, finds a man complete, and he's near a first down at about the 39 yard line. Guess how, much he, guess how much he was short? A, a yard. yard. <laughs> wow. Three straight series. They're going to go for it here. Fourth down. Isaac. Fourth down for the Morgan to give it to Chase. And I don't think he made it. He I fell, don't think he made it. He fell forward, and that still wasn't enough. Wrapped up by Antonio Miller, Crutchfield, and crew. And the Rattler defense comes up big as Morgan State was putting together a nice drive that included three first downs. But the Rattlers are going to get the ball back. And they're going to place the ball down at about the 35-yard line with Florida A&M start there first and 10. Their scheme was the nickel and dime it down the field, and it was working until uh, the Rattlers picked up on what it was that was happening. And we see a turnover on downs. First down, 10 yards to go, Florida and m 11 minutes and five seconds remaining in the third quarter. And the give is up the middle to the Rattler back who fights his way for about two yards on the play. That's Deshaun Smith. Mm -hmm. The patient running of Deshaun Smith. Second down, seven yards to go, Florida A&M. Who is holding on to a 31 to nothing lead. Stanley with the give to Smith, up the middle, make, and he finds a little bit of pay dirt. Here comes a late flag into the play as Smith is knocked out around the 44, 45 yard line, close to a rattle of first down, but let's check out what's going on with the flag. It's gonna be holding on the receiver. <clears throat> but he doesn't seem to be happy with that call. They never are. He's right in front of his coaches, and they don't seem upset with him. Uh, but nonetheless, second and 17, let's see if they can bounce back from this penalty. So the ball is going to be marked at the 35-yard line of Florida a and <laughs> Ten minutes and five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Stanley with the give up the middle to Smith, who finds them a hole, and he... It's going to be knocked out at about the 48-yard line. That's the first down for Florida a and <laughs> And once again, uh, if it's Bonnet back there, you have to be aware. If it's Smith, you have to be aware. Who, who's not a threat in the backfield for the Rattlers? Even Ryan Stanley can run the ball. You can. But these are some nice moves by this young man. As he's chased out, Rattlers first down, 10 yards to go. Ball on the 49-yard line of Morgan State. And the give again is up the middle to a Rattler running back. Smith. And he powers his way for about five yards. And he looks like he's going to become the workhorse right now. He looks like. I don't want to say it. I'm not going to say it. He just looks really patient out there. He's following his linemen. He's waiting for them to get to where they need to be. He's not panicking. Um, and that's just showing uh, uh, IQ of the game. Second down, five yards to go. Florida a and ball marked at the 44-yard line of Morgan State. And the give is to Smith again. And he runs off tackle. He's still running. And he is brought down at about the 35-yard line, a 12-yard run, impressive by Mr. Smith. If Morgan State isn't careful, they're going to allow a few 100-yard rushers here today, especially with the 
score at, at what it is, uh, Simmons is most likely going to try and run the, run the clock out. And Deshaun Smith is set to be the first person to break. First down, 10 yards to go. Florida A&M ball marked at the 36-yard line of Morgan State. As the Rattlers nursing a 31 to nothing lead at the eight minute mark in the third quarter. Halt in the action on the field. That'll move the Rattlers back five yards and bring up a first and 15 as they had a delay of game on the play. Deshaun Smith still in the game? I believe they're going to really work him now. They're uh, looking for a power game. Especially with Bonnet kind of banged up. You have a big lead. You don't want to risk it. And Deshaun Smith is... Proving. The ball carrier again. We have laundry on the field. Flag down at about the 44-yard line. We're going to let them sort this out. See, they're holding or a face mask. That's going to move the Rattlers down to around the 24-yard line. Automatic first down. Automatic first down. As Florida A&M is threatening to extend their lead. Stanley to give to Smith, who finds pay dirt. He's still running. He's running, and he's still running, and he's down and pushed out around the six-yard line. Impressive run by Deshaun Smith. It may be all for naught, as number 80 Marcus Williams may have been caught with another holding penalty at the end of that play there. Florida a and and he has put up a lot of penalties this year. Good call. So that's going to move the Rattlers back on a nice run by Smith. Um, I want to see the replay. That's two holding calls in a row where Williams was really upset with the call. Ball is being placed down at the 20-yard line of Morgan State. Fam you threatening. I'm Melvin Beal here along with Afonso Barber, Florida A&M 31 to zero over Morgan State and Threadney. The give is up the middle to Smith who finds some running room and he's still running and he's gonna be brought down at around the 11 yard run line. Smith is really heating up right now. And he's gonna continue to go up. The only way he does it is if uh, Willie Simmons starts to incorporate other backs into this equation, um, but how he's looking now is kind of weird that they haven't been using them all game. First down, 10 yards to go. Florida A&M ball marked at the 11-yard line. So the Rattlers can get another first down before a touchdown as they enter their red zone. Give us to Smith up the middle. He fights his way down to about the six-yard line. And he's working right now. He is. He's running angry as well. He's throwing a lot of strong stiff arms and putting those shoulder pads down. Earning every yard. Interesting story about the young man was a Florida Mr. Football who actually was recruited by a lot of the major schools. And he ended up with a little bit of a problem. And he had to go to a junior college. And I guess he remembered Willie Simmons. And he's now a Rattler. And he's doing work for the Rattlers right now. As Stanley finds a receiver... Off the fingers of a Sunday Ray. And it'll bring up second down 
and six yards to go for Florida and in. That's another one of those passes. Uh, it's just no quarterback is going to get every pass. I understand that, but these these are these are easy open passes that Ryan Stanley is is missing, and I know it's eating at him. Second down, six yards to go. Florida a and As Stanley gives the ball to Smith, he is going to reverse field. And he's still running. And he's running at the six, the five, the four. And he may have scored <laughs> touchdown to Sean Smith, Florida a and Wow. If you reverse field, you better know what you're doing. And he did. Got some blocking from his teammates and outran the defense for the touchdown. What an impressive drive by Florida and m featuring Deshaun Smith. That young man had a big part of that drive as Florida and m extends their lead to 37 to nothing. Morgan State needs an answer. They're deflated, defeated, and, and need something to, to feel positive about going into next week. Yahi Ali's point after is up, and the kick is good as Florida a &M extends to a 38 to nothing lead here in the third quarter. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Florida A&M is holding a 38 to nothing lead over Morgan State. The Rattlers just completed an impressive drive that was a lot about Deshaun Smith as the young man just had an impressive run where he reversed field to score a touchdown. He did. He also had a big run two plays before that as well that was called back think he didn't feel too good about that and he scored again. Yali, Yahi Ali's kick is taken by Cofield in the end zone and he reverses field but he's going to be met at about the 18 yard line and that's where the Bears will start their drive. Five minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter. We're here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Florida A&M is holding a 38 to nothing lead over Morgan State, a team that has traveled down from Baltimore, Maryland, and Afonso, this program is ineligible for the MEAC title because they're on probation, so they can't compete in postseason pay. So it's going to be interesting as they continue their journey forward. Well, at least they haven't wasted a season. They, they aren't competing <laughs> in any aspect of it because they're 2-5 and five right now. But big win over North Carolina a and a yeah. team that hadn't lost in the conference in quite some time. And ironically, that game didn't count in the conference right. standing. So Morgan State is a team that's building under the first-year head coach, Ernest Jones. He has a lot of young talent and obviously has been recruiting Florida. Yeah, man, and that's a very young talent. They're as is is that caught? I think that's a completion. That's a catch, ladies and, and around gentlemen. Around the forty yard line. And quite honestly, Morgan State offense has looked a lot better under Dion Gallant. They've had some success here and there. Um I give most credit, as I've been saying consistently, to the defense. I, I believe if the first-string quarterback was in, it would be something similar. The give is to the running back, Jordan. He's forced out of bounds. That's Jordan Riggins. But going back to the young talent that you were talking about, Morgan State has a total of 22 seniors on its 2018 wow. roster. Galat's pass is complete as Morgan State <laughs> is trying to put together a drive 
And I would say their goal right now is to get points. This Rattler defense is humming. I believe they're going to go for it every fourth down from now on. Uh, you have nothing to lose, and that's a free play. That's a sack that doesn't mean anything. He was offsides. And the ball is still loose. Morgan State player recovers the ball. But the quarterback and a slew of players from Morgan State are down on the field at around the 43-yard line. You have three players down for Morgan State. Jabril Hazley came in with everything that he didn't like in mind and tore up that backfield, took down, as you mentioned, three bears, but he was offsides before any of that happened. Uh, so the score is 38-0, 241 left in the third. By State Farm. Come back to Bragg Memorial Stadium where Florida A&M holds a 38 to nothing lead over Morgan State. Three players, three Bears went down on that play. The last of them to lead the field was Bruce Trigg, an offensive lineman, 6'4", 300 pounds, out of Loganville, Georgia. He was assisted off the field. And that was really a bizarre play where three players went down at one time on a big play by the Rattlers. And it, it really hurts the Bears because they were going to get yards on that play regardless. As I mentioned, uh, Triggs is the guy who came in and made that play. Not Triggs. Uh, Jabril Hazley is the player who made that play for the Rattlers, but he was offsides from the jump. Second down, six yards to go. The give is to chase up the middle, and he is stopped in there by several Rattlers. Now, this guy won't be credited for the tackle, but he should be number 23 for the Rattlers. Uh, did a great job of setting the edge there and turned him right into the lineman. Third down, eight yards to go. Morgan State, ball marked at the Rattler 47-yard line. The lot back, looks, fires, complete to a receiver that's still running. That's nice play on there by, and it's complete to Corey Holmes, a 6'1", 185-pound senior out of Fort Lauderdale. Florida in the house. Yes. And he was at, you know he's a talent. He was at St. Thomas Aquinas. That's a big-time program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's a rare call. That's a rare call. Face yes. marks yeah. on the offense. I'm not surprised though, because who was Morgan State going up against? <laughs> this front four or five or six or whatever the rotation is, you have to pull out all the stops and do what you can to stop these guys from getting to your quarterback. Third down nine yards to go for Morgan State who right. was putting together a drive but this is a crucial play for the Bears Galat Halt in the action <laughs> The Bears are going in reverse. Delay of game penalty will move them back five yards. Ball is marked at the 47-yard line of Morgan State. I see the second-string quarterback, D.J. Phillips, warming up on the sideline. I think that the Rattlers are about to take their foot off of the gas, especially if Morgan State isn't able to put points on the board in this possession. <laughs> Your coach. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, where Florida A&M leads Morgan State 38 to nothing. The Bears looking at a third down and 14 as Galat is back to pass, finds a man at the middle. He's fighting, he's fighting, he's looking for a first down, and he has more as he will get the first down to keep the Bears' drive alive. 
And that's how you make something happen. Yards after catch right there. Great job. See where the defender is coming from. Plant your feet and get to some space to where you can get some more yards. Deontay White. Give is up the middle. And these are the Diamond Dancers. The Diamond Dancers. You know, because they, they shine and glitter. Of course. <laughs> and that will wrap it up for us here in the third. Score 38 to Morgan State, zero. How about some hummus? Really? Gotta have ice cold Coke. It ain't rocket science. I'll drink to that. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Florida A&M holds a 38 to nothing lead over Morgan State as the Bears are on a drive right now. And it's going to bring up second down. It looks like third down yeah. on the marker. With the stop right here, this game is pretty much on the wraps. And he's Big gunning off. for it. Oh, Almost completes it. But there is a flag at the line of scrimmage. Rattler fans enjoying themselves here. Yep. So we'll, Tallahassee. While we see what that's about, not only Rattler fans, but the the um, the whole Royal Court over there is having a great time as well. And I have to shout out some of, and that penalty is against the Rattlers. Um, it is against the Rattlers. But I have to shout out some of my comrades uh, that I I was also on the Royal Court with, of course, Mr. Jordan Seeley. Uh, my fellow brethren, Chris Collins, Andre French, William Gardner, and Deterius Parker. A uh, wonderful opportunity to represent this university. And today the football team is taking it up in arms as well. First down, 10 yards to go. Bears as the Rattlers stop the play up the middle. The carry was made by Joshua Chase. Bears looking at a second down and eight yards to go as Chase picked up two yards on that play. Got a lot back to pass. In oh. Incomplete pass on the play. Morgan Strait threatening to score, and you know the Rattlers want to preserve that goose egg mm -hmm. that's up on the board. That last penalty killed them. Uh, they had the opportunity if they were to come up with the stop there to just run the clock down to around three, four minutes. and then. But here they are still on the field. Second down, eight yards to go. Morgan State a lot back to pass. Finds a man at around the 11-yard line, and he's going to be brought down by several Rattlers on the play. And that's going to bring up fourth down for Morgan State. And it looks like they're going to bring on their field goal team to try and get on the board. Okay. 13 minutes and 22 seconds left as Nicholas O'Shea is set to kick about a 28-yard. He's going to attempt a 28-yarder. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And that's it for the goose egg, and we're going to take a brief break as Morgan State finally gets on the board, 38-3, with 12.56 left in the fourth. Need the beer blaster right here. Let's go. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. Welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida, as Florida and m has a 38-3 lead over Morgan State. The Bears just completed a nice drive with a 27-yard field goal by Nicholas O'Shea to get points on the board at 13 minutes and 6 seconds remaining in the game. And... 
that kickoff is going to go in the end zone for a touchback. I expect to see some more of Deshaun Smith on this drive. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Simmons is going to milk this clock for all it has. The goose egg is out of the equation, but they still have the opportunity to hold him to just three, and that's pretty good, too. And as always, a full slate of football here on the Worldwide Leader ESPN tonight at 7 o'clock. Texas A&M takes on Mississippi State, and that'll be followed at 1030 by Oregon at Arizona. Florida A&M will take over on the 20 yard line as there is a hot in the action on the field. Okay. Putting the ball in the center of the field. New quarterback in the game for the Rattlers. DJ Phillips completes to Zenday Ray. The converted running back. Right, yes. DJ Phillips, the local product out of Tallahassee Rickards High School. Getting some action in as the Rattlers try to work on the clock. So I don't believe that Simmons is going to run the clock out. I think he's going to run the offense through his uh, second and third stringers. And the give is up the middle to the Rattler running back. And that's the Bishop. <laughs> the Bishop. As he has been struggling a little bit with uh, ankle problems, but he seems to be in good shape right now. Oh, definitely. If, if, if Simmons has him in the game at this, this point, he's told Coach he feels wonderful. And uh, right there, he was very patient and then burst. Luckily, he got caught by the shoelace. Second down, five yards to go. Florida and him to give us the Bishop again. He finds some pay dirt, and this guy... He can go from zero to 60. Patience. <laughs> Quickly. Patience. That's going to be a Rattler first down. And they're going to mount the ball at the 46-yard line of Florida A&M as the Rattlers have gone to their running game. And that was a great, on the replay, I saw the coach on the Rattler side as they get about two or, yeah, about two yards out of that. He he moved the referee over. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> they were about, the, where the referee initially placed it, they were about a, some inches short. Yeah, great strategy by the coach. Yeah, so I know. Man in motion. That's going to be a counter play. Bishop, nice spin move. And can't get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll tally it up as a loss of a one. One of the few times that he has been stopped behind the line. As the Rattler man is kicking it up. The margin 100. Incomparable. Man. Third down, eight yards to go. Florida and M. We're at the 10:09 mark. As the Rattlers, ball marked at the 47-yard line of Florida and M. Quarterback back. Bishop, and he has Painter at the 30. And he cuts it back at the 20, the 19, down to the four-yard line. But we have Laundry on the field. So let's wait and see what the referee saw on that play. Yeah. 
Florida A&M's band into the moment as the Rattlers with a 38-3 lead. So two calls on that play apparently against Florida A&M. The first appeared to be a block in the back. And the second call was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. So this is going to be a big step off against the Rattlers. It is from the spot of the foul. But it nullifies an impressive ride. It definitely does. And I think they're going to mark it at around third and five. Yep, third and, third and five. Third and five. Ball marked at the Bear 49-yard line. The Rattlers have done a great job today from up bouncing back from those penalties. So let's see if they can do it yet again. Third down, five yards to go. Florida hit him. Ball marked on the 49-yard line of Morgan State. D.J. Phillips is the quarterback in the game. And the give is up to middle where the Rattler player is still running. And he's going to be brought down. That's Ricky Henryless who is stopped short of the first down. And they successfully run about three minutes off of the clock there. At any pace, Morgan State is completely out of this one. Nine minutes and seven seconds remaining in the ball game. Florida and M38, Morgan State three. As the number one kicker in the country, Hunter, is set for Florida A&M. Chris Fadul averaging 48 yards a punt. And this young man has been really good this year for the Rattlers. Another extension of the defense. Over 40 yards averaging. Some of those um, in very key moments of the game as they get a delay game right there. He's had 12 kicks over 50 yards this year and 10 boots down inside the 20 yards, mm -hmm. seven fair catches, and five touchbacks. The number one punter in FCS is right here at Florida a &M. And we're going to see a different punter. Yes. And that is interesting. Oh, my goodness. The ball is going to be down at around the 16-yard line. Not sure. <laughs> the punter ran down the field, got a big hit, and then went to celebrate with his teammates and got knocked down. <laughs> Good job, oh fella. Goodness. Good job. And they're hyping him up over there on the sideline. As we will take a break, 38 to 3 with 824. Welcome back to Bragg Memorial Stadium here in Tallahassee, Florida, where Florida AM holds a 38 to 3 lead over Morgan State. And Morgan State has a runner that has advanced the ball. Actually, that was a quarterback keeping the ball. Galat. Dion Galat. And he picked up about five yards on the play. It's going to bring up second down and five yards to go for the Bears. And we're rolling under eight minutes here now. As the crowd is anxious to celebrate with their team after this one. Started, Florida A&M just started off fast and never really stopped that momentum. A little in the second quarter, but ever since then, it's, the, the pedal has been to the floor. Impressive showing by Florida A&M today. 
coming off a bye week and a big win over North Carolina A&T. The give is up the middle to the running back, and he is close to a first down. They're going to give it to him. Guess how much you got it by, Melvin? One yard. One yard. Okay. <laughs> So the Bears, with seven minutes and 12 seconds to go, are mounting a drive. The ball is going to be marked at about the 13, make that the 27-yard line of Morgan State. Another handoff. And he has some running room as he rolls out. There's yet another running back has been inserted for the Bears. Yep, both teams now getting the get their third, fourth, fifth, sixth practice squad fans in the game here. That was number 29, Demetrius Goodwin. He's a 5'6", 175-pound running back out of Cleveland, Ohio, a freshman. Another handoff, and this will go for little to no gain. Goodwin is your ball carrier. And that's Elijah Richardson on the tackle. So the Rattlers still have their first teamers defense in the football game. Six minutes left in the fourth quarter. Florida a and 38 to three. Morgan State, third down, three yards to go. Ball marked on the 34. The lot finds a man complete out over to the 46 yard line and laundry litters the field right now. Not a smart play. Coach is getting them off the field right now. The tackle was already made and uh, he, he wanted to come in for an exclamation point. Now he'll be coming out for one. On the play, that was 36 for the Rattlers. That is uh, Matt Green. Came in a little too late <clears throat> at 15. Five minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the game. Florida A&M 38 to three over Morgan State as the Bears advance into Rattler territory. The ball is marked down at the 37 yard line. And the give is up the middle. Running back finds mm. some room, and then he is met at about the 30-yard line by a hard-hitting rattler on the play. And he's looking for some more playing time. If he's going to be a run help like that, he, he almost caused a fumble right there. And, that's and the give is the good one again. And he's close to a first down, but I think he's going to be a little bit short. And actually, that was Jalen Douse on the tackle before. He, he sees plenty of playing time now. I guess he's just reinstating why he's on the field. It's going to bring up third down and one yard to go for Morgan State as the clock is at 443. Florida A&M, 38 to 3. Over Morgan State. Give is the good one. He's got the first down and a little bit more as he's brought down at about the 25-yard line. And the Bears are threatening to score again. Last few or every trip to the red zone this game, they haven't come out with the touchdown. So let's see if the Rattlers panic or they hold them here. First down, 10 yards to go. Morgan State driving. And the give is up the middle. Big number 75, just moving the center out of the way and then making the play. Defensive tackle. Keenan Anderson, 63, 85. Clock continues to tick. Three minutes, 37 seconds remaining in the game. Morgan State putting together an impressive drive as they're looking to score their first touchdown on the day. In their last drive, they were able to get a 27-yard field goal from Nick O'Shea. 
but flags are down on the field. And Bear, Bear is facing a second and 14. Ball is marked at the 29 yard line. Rattlers in the 4 3, almost intercepted by Richardson. And he may have found pay dirt had he got that. So the Rattler defense still trying to avoid a touchdown being scored against them as Venom is approving of this score. Third down, 14 to go for the Bears. Galat's pass is complete, but he is met by a rattler. And it's going to bring up fourth down for the Bears. If, Clock is under three minutes to go. And it looks like they're going to go for it, all or nothing. This is their last shot. At this point, why not? It's a long ride back to Baltimore, Maryland, Far Morgan State. Fourth down and eight. Rattlers in a 4-3. Quarterback's in trouble. And he's going to be brought down for a sack. And that would have effectively turned the ball over to Florida A&M. Two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the game. I don't expect any timeouts to be called. Uh, so I think we're going to just run it out for the rest of this game. But as of now, it's 38 to 3, 219 left in the fourth. The new Capital One Saver card. Earn 4% cash back on dining and 4% on entertainment. Now when you go out, you cash in. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to Bragg Stadium where Florida a and has a 38 to 3 lead over Morgan State who just turned the ball over down on downs. That run in there for the Rattlers. It's George Webb, a freshman receiver out of Jacksonville, Florida. There it is again. <laughs> As the Rattlers are working on the clock, that is now under the two-minute mark. Another, nope, fakes the handoff. This is DJ Phillips, and it's probably going to be a hold right there. Yep, more laundry on the field. So the Rattlers have a big game against Howard University next week in Washington, D.C. Rattlers feel a little bit better about that trip being that Howard lost today. But Howard is going to be motivated to upset Florida A&M at this particular point. Florida A&M was actually picked to finish fifth in the conference this year. And they're number one and looking really good at taking a trip to Atlanta in the Celebration Bowl. And when you're in that season in which you're surprising everyone, nobody believes in you. Nobody respects you quite yet. So uh, as you mentioned, they're going to Howard. Uh, to a Howard team that's coming off of a loss that they're angry about against a team that they probably think is overrated. Um, so it, I think it's going to be a good one in, my, in D.C. And if you look at the Rattler schedule moving forward after the Howard game, they come back here and face a South Carolina State team that's been somewhat disappointing this year. But that game actually won't count against Florida A&M as a conference game. And then it's the big game left down in Orlando yes, against yes. Bethune-Cookman. Yes, yes. So this was a huge win for the Rattlers because Howard lost. So Florida a and is looking really good right now as they attempt to get their first MEAC championship since 2010. Another run there by the Rattlers just running his clock out. But, uh, yep, you said it. It's going to be... Another classic. 
in Orlando, go ahead and start spending your refund check money on the tickets. And um, like I said, seven years is on the line. Seven years of BCU wins against Florida A&M. And it's going to be on the line at the Florida Classic down in Orlando on November the 17th. Rattlers attempting to run out the clock. 18 seconds remaining in the game. And Florida a and gets their fifth win in a row as the Rattlers are rolling down the stretch here. And as the clock expires, allow me to give you the official final score, 38 to three, as FAMU improves to five and zero oh in the MEAC. So, they didn't let me sign out. <laughs> I don't know why I expected to. Get the guys to believe in, in what we're doing. And, um, it's about fundamentals. Um, it's about our seven Fs of having great faith in one another. You know, playing with great fundamentals. You know, being fast and playing with tempo, fighting and overcoming adversity, and finishing everything we start. Having a lot of fun with it and doing it together as a family. If we, if we stay true to those values, I think the results speak for themselves. Right. And as the season comes to an end, what should the fans expect from FAMU Rattlers? Well, you know, the season's not over yet. You know, still a lot of football left to be played. And uh, our goal is still out there for us to go get. So we got to enjoy this one.